I say good morning, I use the word in a new way. Because there is no night at the moment, is there? So forgive me if my jet lag is a little worse than it would be if I'd just gone off to sleep. And look at the space. Now, I understand that all of us are here to talk about and work on urban <coughs> computing this week. And ubiquitous computing is something that when you say to most people, <coughs> the question is whether we serve technology or it serves us. And therefore, when you say to most people, ubiquitous computing, what they say is, no thanks. And so the challenge is to develop a humane and critical uh, and, and, and uh, culturally situated approach to ubiquitous computing, and not to allow the mere possibility of something being executable to be some reason enough to do it. I find with most groups of people that when you want to talk about ubiquitous computing, the best thing to do is to take a longer historical perspective instead of all this techno-futurism. And one way to do that is to look at another technology that people were terrified of. They were talking about this on the Zoom last night, which is electrification. We're looking at the elimination uh, of the world's colonial aspirations in Chicago in the 1893s, which was a hot ticket at the most progressive Electrification took the familiar and made it seem strange. It made the world over again. And it's commonly been said, ever since the days of Park in the 90s, where I spent a sabbatical once, that uh, electrification is a very good analogy for the disappearing computer. Tesla's motor disappeared into things. And a new field brand new field of industrial design was born, very analogous historically to the birth and rise of interaction design. The great liberal art of the 21st century had parallels in electrification a century ago. Strange new gizmos in this field, the great urban, sorry, the great uh, uh, German industrial designer Peter Behrens came up with a strange new technology called personal environmental management. Actually, it's just called a fan. And look at this hack here where they're getting electricity out of something that looks like a gas fitting. So the spirit to come to this rising new field of in interaction design is one of strange hacks toward humane ends. Now, in the world of urban computing, there are some strange hacks out there, all right? Some of, some of them quite highbrow. This is the new hall in Copenhagen. Uh, some of them quite transformative, deep, deep, smart, green buildings, right? Some of them working with big data. You may know these projects. Some of them very DIY, you know, when after Fukushima, they, uh, the DIY culture made the meters that people didn't have. Some of them very, well, improvisatory. Some of them very systems integrative, like Bill Mitchell's Smarty Card, which ha have the secondary quality of being uh, reserve banks for the city's power grid with all their batteries aggregated. Now, you may not think of a, a Baileib as a smart hack or as a uh, uh, ubiquitous computing application, and that's exactly my point. Computing is now a part of things. My friend Mike Kuniaki calls it information as a material. The idea that uh, information technology is just one more feature, one more system of things, and this is the beginning of urban computing. Eric Palos is probably the person most often credited with the uh, uh, expression urban computing. Uh, as for a, a call for citizen science, uh, not just, uh, and that these, these devices are, are, are instruments. Julian Bleeker, very wonderful artist, asked what's it, what's it mean to have tangible social objects uh, in the urban network. This is urban computing. Dan Hill, who spent time in Finland, imagines it to be drizzle and not a fire hose. For many, many years now, I've uh, woken up jet lagged in different places, raising the prospect of situated technology in an age obsessed with one size fits all portals to some faraway corporate and increasingly predatory cloud. 
habituated technologies exist too. Technology can be slow and close, as does food. Content is something you do, not something you are given. And I wrote about this in a book a long time ago. But how things are changing. Oh my God, the obsession with, with the AI, you know? Just, I mean, everywhere I go, people have ur- messages so urgent that they cannot wait until they get to the other side of the street or until they put on their other sock. It is social. But the point here, and I think this is what this workshop is here to do this week, right, is to consider the notion of city as platform. This is Stan Hill's expression. And it's very, very important to get past the notion that it's just way showing, right? There's a very, very large advertising company who uh, monitors your every keystroke who would love to show you a different set of things than somebody else about where to go to part with your money soonest. But it's also citizen science. And it's not just the handheld, but it's also situated and built in. Most technology isn't in your hand. It isn't in your bag. And it's not just blowing rectangles everywhere. In my country, we have a satire magazine called The Onion that called the story in 2009 as a an invasion of glowing rectangles. Okay, so it is very much a real thing. And it has been. The cities have been overlaid with information for a long time, but it's accelerating and never has so much of it. Um, and, and you don't want it just to be right, so you don't want it just to be instructions, right? This is not what you want. It's, it's accelerating, and never has more of the human perceptual field been reverse engineered for cognition. It's, it's a, it's a, and that's what I've written about in my newest book, uh, which is about the question of attention. It's not an information economy. Information is super abundant. What's scarce and valuable and stolen and, and, and hoarded and has to be managed with attention. Now, all this has come together in other ways, and, and I'm here on the recommendation of a person named Marcus Foss who did these books about this, and, and you people know this, and what a pleasure it is to wake up utterly jet-lagged amid a group of people who understand it and competing, because then we can jump to what I want to do this week and, and, and why I would be here when I obviously uh, am not here to tell you which technology you can build tomorrow to make the most money. Richard Saul Worman, the great information designer, says there are 19 cities of 20 million people or more in the 21st century. There's Mexico, for one. That's just Mexico. Okay, that's one neighborhood, 2 million people. And in these cities, a great deal is experienced habitually in the background, in a state of distraction. And all kinds of developments are ad hoc. There's all kinds of resources, gasoline. The anthropologist Jan Shipchase is one of the best uh, stringers on earth at, at his Flickr feed about casual street level everyday uses of technology is something to know and, and love. And, and it's there that in my one of these workshops we will jump in with the idea that there are uh, resource management schemes in the emerging global megacities that matter more to the state of the planet than whether or not people in California drive a Prius or a Hummer. And that in these places, the bottom-up, ad hoc uh, aggregation of, of, uh, of schemas for resource management might occur neither as the market nor the state, as the great late uh, Nobel laureate economist Eleanor Austin put it. I come to you from a course uh, in Network Cities that does this in a semester, but we're going to do it in four days. And that's me, okay? These are some projects. We'll be working in storyboards from the Network Cities course. Cairo, right? Projection schemes. Mapping smells even. Mapping manga. Tokyo's vending machine. I like this one. I'll, I'll leave you with this. This is a, uh, because it's so difficult to get around many towns, 
uh, if you can bring the market prices to people, they'll know which parts of town to go to. This is an urban food networks piece that's basically uh, information as a material uh, in a pedicab uh, micro food uh, uh, market, and it's part of a larger network. So that's the spirit of the workshop in, in the age of this, and that's me. Thank you. <laughs>